In this video, we will be talking about cell signaling. Cell signaling is extremely important for communication between cells and keeps the organism stable and able to process all different types of information. In this video, we will go through the process of cell signaling, what local signaling is and how it works, and finally we'll talk about what long distance signaling is and how it works. Cell communication is vital for multicellular organisms. Communication is important because the organism needs to be able to coordinate their activities that allow them to not only survive, but also reproduce. We begin this lesson with cellular messaging, which occurs because cells can signal to each other and interpret signals that they receive. It has been found that the same cell signaling mechanisms have been seen in an array of species and processes through cell research. For example, it is seen in embryonic development, hormone action, and even cancer. Signals received by cells take different forms, such as light, touch, or chemical signals. However, signals are usually chemical signals. A signal transduction pathway is the process that a signal on a cell surface is converted to a specific cellular response in a series of steps. A good example of signal transduction pathway is the yeast used to make bread, wine, and beer. Within this yeast, there are two sexes, an A and an alpha. The cells of type A secrete a signaling molecule called A factor, which will bind to receptors on the alpha cell. So here you have the A factor, it's represented in this red square, and it will bind to the receptors found on the alpha cell. And you can see that this will fit perfectly with the square. And on the other hand, alpha cells release a signaling molecule called alpha factor, which binds to receptors on A cells as seen here. So now you have the alpha factor seen in this blue triangle, and it will bind perfectly to the receptors on the A cell. And the result of this process is the fusion of both cells. And the fusion causes the new A slash alpha cell to contain all the genes from both cells. And interestingly, thorough research has shown that signal transduction pathways are extremely similar in both yeast and animal cells. And this suggests that early versions of these mechanisms evolved way before the first multicellular organisms appeared on Earth. In fact, it is believed that these signaling mechanisms evolved in ancient prokaryotes and single-celled eukaryotes, which were then carried out by multicellular organisms. Cell signaling is still important in the microbial world, as cells in many bacterial species secrete small molecules that are detected by other bacterial cells. These secreted signaling molecules allow bacteria to sense the local density of bacterial cells, and this process is known as quorum sensing. The same process can also help some bacteria survive in harsh conditions. This is done through bacterial cells coming together to form biofilms, which are aggregations of bacteria. These aggregations can then perform specialized functions, such as the Myxococcus xanthus, which is a soil bacteria. And when food is scarce, starving cells secrete a molecule, sending a message to neighboring cells to aggregate. In response to this, the cells will form a structure known as the fruiting body, which allows the bacteria to survive until the conditions within the given environment improve. So again, you see this cell in the left-hand corner, it's secreting a molecule, which is represented by these arrows, and they're slowly going to form together, get closer together, and finally what you see here is this biofilm, or the fruiting body. Uh, they aggregate together, and they formed a fruiting body. When cells need to communicate, there are two ways in which this is possible, local signaling and long-distance signaling. During local signaling, animal or plant cells can communicate through direct contact. Animal and plant cells have cell junctions that directly connect the cytoplasm to the adjacent cytoplasm, which is seen right here. Cells can also communicate through direct contact between membrane-bound cell surface molecules, and this allows cell-cell recognition, which is seen in the picture labeled 2 right here. And when these two receptors come together, the cells will be able to communicate with each other, and this form of communication is important for the immune system. So again, this square fits perfectly into this receptor molecule on the blue cell, and this is how they can communicate. And right here in the black, you see the uh, gap junction, which allows the two cytoplasms to interchange receptors or messages. Other examples of local signaling include signaling cells secreting messenger molecules. These messenger molecules will only travel short distances for local signaling, and they will affect cells in the area. And these are known as local regulators. One type of local regulator is growth factors, which cause nearby cells to grow in size and divide. As seen in the first picture below, right here, a cell will release these growth factors, acting on nearby cells, affecting many at a time. And this is known as paracrine signaling. 
The local regulators are secreted by this red cell. They will react to this blue cell by causing all of them or any of them surrounding the red cell to grow in size. Another type of local signaling is synaptic signaling, which occurs in the animal nervous system. Now the way synaptic signaling works is an electric signal along a nerve triggers the secretion of a chemical carried by neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters will then diffuse across the synapse, which is the space between the nerve and target cell, and this target cell is usually another nerve cell. When this neurotransmitter reaches the target cell, it triggers or stimulates the target cell, which is seen below. So the electric signal runs through the nerve cell, it releases this chemical or neurotransmitter, which will diffuse across the synapse, reach the target cell, and this will either cause the same occurrence if it's a nerve cell, or it will cause a reaction to some sort of uh, outside force, you know, whether it's causing your body to move, your arm, it's telling your arm to move, or your fingers, or it's giving some sort of direction as to what it wants your body to do. Both animals and plants use hormones for long distance signaling. Using hormones to signal for long distance is also known as endocrine signaling, and is seen when specialized cells release hormones, which travel throughout the body via the circulatory system, or the blood, and will eventually reach its target cells in different parts of the body. One example of this is insulin, which is produced by the pancreas and travels in the bloodstream, helping store excess glucose found in the body, which is seen after one eats. So as you guys can see here in this diagram, you have the cell that's going to release its mo signaling molecules. These will then diffuse into the blood vessels or the circulatory system, and eventually it will travel a distance, uh, and if it's another part of the body, it will eventually reach its target cell, it will diffuse through the blood vessels, and it will cause this target cell to react to whatever the message was. And another example of long distance signaling is nerves, as we saw before. And it's interesting that they can be both local and long distance signaling. Because the signal can travel through multiple nerves, synaptic signaling is considered a long distance signal as well. It is important to note that a target cell will only respond to the signaling molecule if it has a receptor that is specifically for that signaling molecule. This is important because it will not trigger cells to react to something if they are not targeted. And in plants, hormones sometimes travel in the vessels, but usually get their target cell by either moving through cells or diffusing through the air as a gas. And one example of this is ethylene, which can easily pass through the cell walls because it is so small. And again, ethylene is the gas used to ripen fruits or vegetables. As always, thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments in regards to this video or any videos you would like to see in the future.